The Party for Freedom is a right-wing populist political party in the Netherlands, founded in 2005 as the successor to Geert Wilders' one-man party in the House of Representatives. It won nine seats in the 2006 general election, making it the fifth-largest party in Parliament. In the 2010 general election it won 24 seats, making it the third-largest party. Since then, the PVV has agreed to support the minority government led by Prime Minister Mark Rutte without having ministers in the cabinet. However, the PVV withdrew its support in April 2012 due to differences over budget cuts. It came third in the 2014 European Parliament election, winning four out of 26 seats. With program items like administrative detention and strong assimilationist stance on the integration of immigrants into Dutch society, the Party for Freedom breaks from the established centre-right parties in the Netherlands. In addition, the party is consistently Eurosceptic and since early July 2012, according to its then-presented programme for the elections a few months later on September 12, even strongly advocating withdrawal from the EU. PVV is the name under which the foundation sticked in Grow at Wilders operates. It has Geert Wilders as its sole member, making the party unique in the Dutch parliament. History The party's history starts with Geert Wilders' departure from the VVD in September 2004. Wilders could not accept the VVD's positive stance towards Turkey's possible accession to the European Union, and left the party disgruntled. Although the VVD expected Wilders to return his parliamentary seat to the party, he refused, and continued to sit in Parliament as a one-man party. Grow at Wilders in June 2005, Wilders was one of the leaders in the campaign against the European Constitution, which was rejected by Dutch voters by 62%. Bart Jan Spruit, director of the conservative Edmund Burke Foundation, joined the party in January 2006. In order to formulate a party program and to train its prospective representatives for the forthcoming national election, Spruit left the party in the summer of 2006 after it proved unable to build broad conservative backing, and people like Juice Deadmans and Marco Pastors proved unwilling to join. After the 2006 elections, Spruit said he was not surprised that the Party for Freedom had gained seats but maintained that, if the Party for Freedom had sought cooperation with the Edmonds and Pastors, it would have won more, even enough to bring about a CDA-VVD majority government. Later, Spruit commented that the PVV had a natural tendency toward fascism. He later qualified the statement, though he didn't withdraw it. Former PVV candidate Lucas Hartong called Spruit's claims a cheap insinuation. In an HP, the TIJD profile dated December 2006, the party was described as a cult, with an extremely distrustful Wilders only accepting fellow candidates completely loyal to him, and compared the PVV to the Socialist Party led by Jan Marinissen but without reaching that degree of organizational perfection. On 10 January 2007, the PVV announced it would not field candidates at the forthcoming provincial elections. This meant it would be unrepresented in the Senate. On 13 January 2007, NRC Handels Blad reported that a PVV intern had solicited for signatures on the website Forum's Dutch Disease Report and Polinko. The latter a forum described as far-right by various organisations, among them the Dutch Complaints Bureau for Discrimination on the Internet. Any party participating in this election was required to collect at least 30 signatures from supporters in each of the 19 electoral districts of the 1500 signatures the PVV received. The Dutch anti-fascist group identified 34 known far-right supporters. In a response, Wilder said he regretted that far-right sympathizers had provided signatures, denied any personal responsibility for them and reasserted his dislike of far-right parties like National Front of France and Flemish Interest.
Noted writer and columnist Leon de Winter later declared the affair to be the result of a campaign of demonization against Geert Wilders led by NRC, Handelsblad and Volksgrant newspapers, as well as the broadcaster Vara, former trade union leader and prominent Christian Democrat Jokal Terpstra proposed an initiative against Geert Wilders and the PVV on 30 November. 2007. In newspaper trial, Terpstra sees Wilders as promoting intolerance and discrimination against Muslims. He is supported in his cause by the large Dutch trade unions and refugee organizations. Politicians and the public are divided on Terpstra's initiative. The newspaper De Purse reported the next day that much of Terpstra's support did not actualize. Polling by Morris de Hond published in March 2009 indicated that the PVV was the most popular parliamentary party. The polls predicted that the party would take 21% of the national vote, giving it 32 out of 150 seats in the Dutch parliament. If the polling results were to be replicated at a genuine election, Wilders would be a major power broker and could become prime minister. However, de Hon's results were not uncontroversial, as they were based on a panel of people who have signed up for the election poll on the internet and thus were not a random sample. According to Jupe van Holsten, professor of election research, therefore, de Hon's polls were not representative of the population. Other Dutch polls have shown contrasting results, with the PVV often getting less support, though still remaining very popular. On 15 May 2009, the PVV asked Borkenende to support the foundation of a Greater Netherlands actively, third-party source needed by February 2010. The PVV had once more become the most popular party, according to a poll by Maurice de Hond which said it would win 27 to 32 parliamentary seats in the next election, up to from the previous poll in early January. In the parliamentary elections of 9 June 2010, the PVV went from 9 to 24 seats, winning over 15% of the votes, making the PVV the third largest party in parliament. By July 2010 the PVV again became the biggest party in the polls after the parliamentary elections. Following difficulties in forming a new coalition and the PVV technically being excluded from the coalition talks because the CDA showed reluctance to cooperate with the PVV. According to the polls, the PVV would get 35 seats in a new election, which is a record high number. In August 2010, during the difficult cabinet formation following the elections, the PVV emerged as a prominent player in a proposal for a new minority government in the Netherlands. While the party would not gain a ministerial appointment, the PVV would tolerate a centre-right minority government coalition, a proposed deal that would make the party one of the most influential forces. Led by Ivo Opstelten, a former mayor of Rotterdam who was appointed mediator for the next stage of negotiations, the forming of a government of EVD in Christian Democratic Appeal with support of the PVV was negotiated. The resulting coalition agreement included elements it pushed for, such as a Borka ban, though the ban was never put in place. The VVD and CDA would have to rely on the PVV to get important legislation through. With this deal the Netherlands would follow the Danish model. Since in Denmark the anti-immigration Danish People's Party also stayed out of government but supported a minority centre-right liberal conservative government. The very fact of the participation of the PVV in these coalition negotiations has caused fierce discussions in political circles and was considered very unlikely until recently, after the elections. CDA parliamentary fraction president Maxim Verhagen first had stated that as a matter of principle he refused to negotiate with VVD and PVV about a centre-right government saying that the PVV represented views that could not be reconciled with Dutch law. These objections on principle disappeared in five weeks and Verhagen turned out to be willing to negotiate over a cabinet whose fate would lie in the hands of Wilders.
On 20 March 2012, Hero Brinkman quit the party, citing a lack of democratic structure within the PVV among other things, qualifying this with a statement of continued support for the minority RUT cabinet. Two days later, three PVV members representing North Holland in the House followed his example. In the parliamentary elections of 12 September 2012, the PVV went from 24 to 15 seats, winning 10% of the vote. Platform The Party for Freedom combines economic liberalism with a conservative program on immigration and culture. The party seeks tax cuts, decentralization and limiting child benefits and government subsidies. Regarding immigration and culture, the party believes that the Judeo-Christian and humanist traditions should be taken as the dominant culture in the Netherlands, and that immigrants should adapt accordingly. The party wants a halt to immigration especially from non-Western countries. It is hostile towards the EU, is against future EU enlargement to Muslim-majority countries like Turkey and opposes a dominant presence of Islam in the Netherlands. The party is also opposed to dual citizenship. The Parliamentary Documentation Center of the University of Leiden characterizes the PVV as populist, with both conservative, liberal, right-wing and left-wing positions. Political issues Dual nationality and Kadiya ARIB controversy in February 2007 PVV parliamentarian Fritzmer introduced a motion that would have prohibited any parliamentarian or executive branch politician from having dual citizenship. The PVV claimed that it is unclear where a dual national's loyalty lies. The motion would have made it difficult if not impossible for Labour MPs Ahmed About Alab and Nebahat al Bayrak to become members of the fourth Balkan Ender cabinet. The motion had to be withdrawn, however, after objection from the President of the House of Representatives, Gerda Verbeet, University of Maastricht law professor Tuan taxis a risk in executive branch officials having dual citizenship, and was angered by Verbeet's insistence to close the debate. However, the European Convention on Human Rights, as reviewed in 2010 ECTHR jurisprudence has reaffirmed that form of discrimination is a violation of a human right. However, in 2007 the PVV planned to call for a vote of no confidence against junior ministers about Halib and al bayrak when the new cabinet had its first meeting with the House of Representatives claiming that their respectively Moroccan and Turkish passports put their loyalties into question. In the event, the motion was only supported by the PVV itself. The issue of dual nationality, however, was not over yet. On 2 March 2007, Radio Netherlands reported that Labour Party MP Cardia ARIB, who had been sworn into Parliament the day before, was sitting on a commission appointed by the King of Morocco. The PVV said that this commission work endangers Arabs' loyalty to the Netherlands, and that she should choose between being a member of the Dutch Parliament or the Moroccan Commission. Geert Wilders said that Arabs remark on national television that her loyalty lay neither with the Netherlands nor Morocco was shameful. The Liberal VVD party similarly remarked that her double orientation would hurt Dutch integration. All other parties were appalled by the PVV and VVD's comments. Perhaps in the light of the Mildover ruling, in the first RUT government in 2010 chaired by the VVD leader, supported by the PVV, Marlies Veldheridges and Van Zanten became the new state secretary for health, welfare and sport, having both Dutch and Swedish nationality. Immigration The party fielded a controversial motion in the 2007 general deliberations on the immigration budget calling for a stop to immigration from Muslim countries. The House of Representatives at first declined to bring the motion forward for debate. 
Justice Minister Ernst Hirsch Ballen said it was in violation of the Dutch constitution and international law. Another motion by the PVV, against police officers wearing veils, did gain a parliamentary majority. In 2012 the PVV party has launched a website named Reporting Centre on Central and East Europeans which receives complaints about Central and East European immigrants in the Netherlands. Do you have problems with people from Central and Eastern Europe? Have you lost your job to a Pole, a Bulgarian, a Romanian or another East European? We want to know, the website states. It displays newspaper headlines such as, wouldn't it be better if you went back home, and, East Europeans, increasingly criminal. The European Commission has condemned the website, and EU Justice Commissioner Vivian Redding declared, we call on all citizens of the Netherlands not to join in this intolerance. Citizens should instead clearly state on the PVV's website that Europe is a place of freedom. The website caused a lot of controversy within the European Union party platform other noteworthy policies that Wilders mentions in his party program. Harsh punishment of violence against Jews and the LGBT community, which particularly comes from the Islamic corner, recording ethnicity for all Dutch citizens. Prohibition of Islamic and kosher slaughter. Limitation of cannabis coffee shops within a radius of no less than one kilometer from schools. Active repatriation of criminals of foreign citizenship and Dutch nationals originating from the Netherlands Antilles. Deportation of criminals having foreign nationality or multiple citizenship back to their country of origin after a prison sentence. Restrictions on immigrant labor from new EU member states and Islamic countries. Removal of resources from anti-climate change programs, development aid and immigration services. Abolition of the Senate. Shutting down of all Islamic schools. Ban on Islamic gender apartheid. General pension age must remain 65. Governmental communication to be exclusively in Dutch or Frisian. Dutch language proficiency and a 10-year Dutch residency and work experience requirement for welfare assistance. Constitutional protection of the dominance of the Judeo-Christian and humanistic culture of the Netherlands. Choosing to defend the essential elements of Dutch culture. Freedom of the LGBT community, as well as assured equality of men and women which Islam may challenge. Repeal of anti-smoking legislation in bars. Investment in more nuclear power plants and clean coal plants to reduce dependency on imported oil and because coal is cheaper. Withdrawal from the European Union. Return to the Gilda and cease use of the euro. Abolition of the European Parliament and no cooperation in any EU activity. Ask the EU to remove the Dutch star in the European flag. Repeal flight tax or carbon dioxide tax. Binding referendum on subjects like the EU in a multicultural society. No more tax money to left organizations. Keeping track of the ethnicity of people who have committed crimes. Select policemen on decisiveness. Binding assimilation contracts for immigrants. Taxes on the Islamic headscarf and prohibition of the Quran. Ban on headscarves in any public function. Support Afrikaners, as it is Dutch heritage. Opposition to Turkey's membership in NATO and remaining in NATO because it is crucial. Halt all support and propaganda for Palestine and Palestinians. No more windmills and funding for durability or CO2 reduction. No more fiscal greening. Name. The name, Party for Freedom, was as a reference to the Freedom Party, a Dutch political party founded after the Second World War, which merged with the People's Party for Freedom and Democracy in 1948. Its logo contains a seagull in the Dutch national colours red, white and blue. Financing. Most Dutch political parties have a right to state support which is based on both the amount of seats in the parliament and the number of party members. PVV declares that since it is against state subsidies, it rejects its own party to be financially supported by the government and believes the taxpayer should not pay for political parties they don't support.
To finance the activities of the PVV, the party relies on private donations. As the party does not disclose its finances, it is unknown who are financing the PVV. According to Hero Brinkman, the most prominent member to leave the party, the PVV gets most of its finances from certain foreign lobby groups. According to Reuters, Daniel Pipes Middle East Forum paid for the trials of Geert Wilders and for Wilders Security. David Horowitz paid Wilders a good fee for two speeches given in the U.S. In 2012, the Dutch Parliament is discussing to tighten the financial rules for political parties, forcing them to become more transparent. The PVV indicated that it would use any means available not to disclose its donors. On several instances the PVV also applied for, and received, European Union funding.